guys, welcome back to Cami Sons Crafts. Today I am going to show you how to make a flip book. So what I've done here is I have taken four different sets of six by six pieces of paper. I have grabbed some washi tape. This is kind of knockoff washi tape that I got at the dollar store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape together two pieces of paper, leaving a little gap in between so when you close the book it will be able to close. I try to measure it with a toothpick sometimes just to kind of see you know, that's at least the gap that I need. Sometimes it always doesn't work out that way, but at least that size of a gap. I then try and cut my washi to the size of the paper. Sometimes it's easy to measure it depending on the angle that I'm sitting, um, it is easier to just kind of measure and then put it down while I'm recording. If I'm sitting on the couch, you know, I mean, those types of things are going to play into it, but you just want to measure it and then adjust it. I would recommend measuring it above and then putting it on. As you can see, it ripped the paper. I wasn't too worried because it was going to be covered anyways, but Sometimes I am picky and I do like to show you guys exactly how I do my my crafts from start to finish. Even if I mess up, I always try to find a way to fix the error and just move on. Um, if I wasn't recording, I probably still wouldn't have fixed it. So you tape the front and back side of both pages. So I'm going to take these two, tape them together, and then those back two and tape them together. And all that I did is cut the paper itself. These were full size pieces of paper, 12 by 12. I didn't like the ones that I had that were smaller, so I did end up cutting them six by six, and then it's only one sided, so I did have to cut two of them six by six and then glue them together. So that's what I did prior to starting the camera. But here you just see me taping it down, kind of have some difficulties. So that's why if you kind of just measure and then cut, you're not ripping the paper. It's going to be easier to place. Then you can grab both sides of the tape and place it down like that. Obviously you can see you have difficulties. So again, it is going to be more beneficial to be able to hold both ends of the tape, put it on. It makes it more straight. Some things aren't always straight, of course, and you have to redo it, but it will make it a little bit straighter. Then I just push on the crease of both sides and then cut the excess off. I figured out that scissors aren't the best tool to use, obviously. Um, so I found out that the best option would be an X-Acto knife. It is just harder for me to do that on camera. As you can see here, I'm not even cutting it in camera but it is a little bit harder for you to see that way. So now you just crease the sides, make sure the tape sticks. Sometimes the cheaper tape doesn't like to stick. So you could always run a line of runner tape maybe on it or maybe some glue to it so it stays. Kind of depends on the texture of your paper and the quality of the tape. I would imagine washi wouldn't be something that would come off, but you never know. So I'm gonna repeat the process with the next two pieces of paper. What you want to keep in mind when you are doing this is how you're going to lay your book out because after you tape the two and the two, then you're gonna tape the middle two com together to combine a row of four. It's easier on camera and it is easier to do two and two and then combine those as well. So here I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did before. measuring about what I think I need giving you know giving yourself extra but about what you think you would need tape it down and cut it
pretty simple. Do the same thing again. And then now we're going to do uh, the strips of tape one more time, measuring it with the toothpick, measuring the paper, pressing it down, and cutting the excess off. So as you can see, I did not center it with both pieces of paper. So sometimes it's forgiving and you can pull it up that top half. Again, more paper ripped. So it's definitely always again beneficial to measure and then tape. Sometimes you can see it, it will be easy to be removed. And that piece didn't quite cover up on the other side of that pink right there, but wasn't too picky, wasn't too noticeable. So now we will just cut off the sh extra strips. And I think I tried to move it right there over again because I could tell that they weren't even, but it's not going to matter if they're even on both sides because you're only going to see one side at a time. So it's not something you have to be too particular about. But now I folded the papers in word like you could see. So you bring the two outer ones in and then your one that you have that's column number square number two becomes your front and then sometimes it's not always even with the extra tape you can cut it off and I don't know why but sometimes it's just not even um, it could be the way that you arrange your papers but it is not even so I just use an exacto knife and I cut off the excess <laughs> paper cutter and I'm going to trim off the two inside flaps that are inside the booklet that way it kind of sh will be able to shut a little bit you see how there's not a gap if there wasn't a gap you wouldn't be able to fold it on the parts where we put the tape so I'm just gonna cut off really just a little bit at a time on each one and make sure that it folds in half evenly and that way there's not kind of like loop and bubbles in the middle of the booklet um, so it's pretty simple just you know like 1 16th of an inch at a time on both the front flap and the back flap <laughs> it is time to decorate so I have already cut off camera some pictures down to size of the boyfriend and the baby and myself so I've got one for the front flap one for each inner flap and then one for each of the you know the four slides inside I won't do anything on the back probably just put the date or the year but all I'm gonna do was glue the pictures down with this runner adhesive runner and you know lay out kind of where I want the pictures to go and then I will add some embellishments and some design things and go from there and you'll just kind of see me go through the process 
I'll speed it up as quick as I can. Um, see if I can speed it up a little bit more once I get it on YouTube so you don't have to watch me just doing it. Um, but I'll show you kind of how I just lay the pictures out and what stuff that I have to design this with. <music> Okay, so now that I have my first picture down and it's time to start decorating the front flap, I'm going to show you all of the stickers that I've used from. So this is the first set that I pull a couple pieces from. And I don't think I pull from all of these, but I'm going to show you what I had in mind. Um, so I'm going to use these heart stickers. And the 3D ones, you can pull the top one off so you get like double. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use some of these ones they are kind of wedding themed family themed so I use a couple pieces from this one and I have used a couple of these on some of my coasters in my wedding themed flip book that I'm going to do a video on and show you um, after this one this one is the process of making it I will show you in another video one that I've already done so now I just got this at like a yard sale. It came with a ton of different things. Little cut flagged banners that I'm going to use in pink and blue. They also have some tags on the other flap. I'm going to use a lot of these dot adhesives, foam things I got at the $1.50 bin at Michael's. Yeah, adhesive foam dots. They're really handy. There's a hundred of them in each package. They do go quite a long ways, which is nice because I use them a lot in here. Then I got these at the dollar store a while ago, so I'm going to use a couple different pieces from each one. This one I'll probably use Life is Sweet and I love this, Memory Collector. And this next one I also got at the dollar store, has some board runners on it, some little triangular flag pointies. Some, you know, it's for planners, but I don't think I use anything out of this one. I'm trying to see if I use any. Yeah, I didn't use any of them, but I did want to show you them because I did get them at the dollar store just recently. Um, on this one, I'm going to use the love, maybe the cherish, use some stars, use those little octagon pieces. I didn't use any on the back of here, but it is still something I wanted to show you. These are really cool. They're front and back, of course, 39 pieces on some, some have 40 that I just got at the dollar store. The next one, of course, is still the dollar store one. Little tag IDs type things with the uh, arrow pieces. I'm into that lately. The heart. Happy birthday. So it's very versatile with what you use these for. I've seen people use them in the planners like I've stated, but so many things you can do with them. These are the very fine point pens that I, pens and marker things I got from Michaels. I did it in one of my last hauls. I'm going to use pink, black, and silver, and some of the small cut cardboard paper I got from Michaels. Okay, the next things I'm going to show you are just the different packets of the letters that I got. If I use them, I'm going to use probably silver or black. I haven't used any quite yet. I might add some and show you at the end. I still haven't decided if I'd like to add any or not. But now I am going to start assembling my pictures with some of the different things that I've got.
all of the pictures are down how I want them. It is time to add the stickers and embellishments, anything like that that you'd like to add. I'm sticking with the love and family theme. Don't have a lot of family in it, but more, you know, the love, the memories with, with my baby. Her first pictures that we did professionally kind of theme. But I kind of just go with it once I've got a base down. The decoration part is usually pretty easy. Kind of just comes naturally. But you will see when you pull off some of these, the stickers that are 3D and make them 3D. But it also allows you to get this 3D sticker plus the still have the sticker that the 3D sticker came off of. So you kind of get double the amount if they're 3D, which I like. Um, but I'm just going to go page by page, decorate what I think looks good. As I stated before, I have finished it to my liking right now. I'm trying to decide if I need to go back and add more things. Um, I would like for it to say her name, family, and maybe like mom and dad. Um, I don't know yet though. I don't want it to be too overcrowded and seem like too much is going on but basically this rest of the video is going to be me just adding things where I think they need to go once you get to this point just let your creativity take you if you want to make homemade envelopes to embellish these types of things with I mean there's so much that you can do put jewels on it rhinestones on it you can put, you know, jewels and diamonds. I have some of those, but the one that I did before, it makes it not flat. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I like it where it can close or if it's more blingy and it doesn't close is more appealing to me. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to compare these ones side by side and see what's going on and the feel of it before I would add any of that but if you like it and it doesn't bother you I mean there's so much that you could do you can make it a thick flip book or a thin flip book and not have the puffy things in it um, I kind of feel like right now with doing the 3D effect with the adhesives might be a little too much for what I was going for on this versus maybe the wedding theme I can get past it's supposed to be blingy it's a wedding um, but it's definitely something that you should just let your creativity flow. There's no right or wrong way. Um, and in my opinion, maybe the only thing that I would think would be right or wrong is if your colors don't match. I did that in one of my pocket letters. I don't feel like the colors meshed at all, so it just was horrible. But if your colors go together, you don't even have to have a cohesive thing as long as it matches to me that's all that matters and anywhere from there you just can let your creativity take off and you don't even have to spend a lot of money on it uh, the pieces of paper were in packs for five dollars at Walmart in their clearance section most of my stickers I get at the dollar store or the really cheap section of Michaels or maybe a little more expensive at Michaels if I have a coupon or they're on sale but most of the stuff is going to be able to get you multiple projects if you spend the more money. But you don't even have to have spent $100 to make something beautiful. So I recommend watching a lot of YouTube videos as well. That's where I get all my base ideas. And then I just go off of the things that I like in life. You know, I've got a baby, I've got a boyfriend, um, I'm big on a family. So I do a lot of that stuff. Um, resin coasters you know definitely check out my other videos on the crafts that I do uh, I've got bottle cap coasters um, kind of bottle cap coasters kind of bottle cap magnets that I do that I'm gonna put a video up on I've got a couple of my coasters of course there's more to come of those there are so many things that you can do and uh, whether it's for children or or yourself but just definitely if it's something you're in, into, start small and, and work your way up. You don't have to put it on film and show everybody. You don't have to show anybody. Just do something that you enjoy. And if crafting is what you enjoy, then just go with the flow and, and let it happen. Definitely uh, check out my other videos, though, and 
subscribe. I'm going to be doing a back to school giveaway here soon. I'll put a video up with all of the rules. One of the rules is you have to subscribe. So save your time some now, subscribe, and then you'll be able to get notification of when that video goes up and when that contest will air till, um, I know I'm doing one giveaway for sure. Maybe I'll be able to do two different sets of back to school giveaway, but I'm hoping to do quite a bit, um, giveaway and hoping to do maybe like a theme, like a pink theme and a blue theme or a purple theme, just kind of whatever I can find, but, um, more information on that to come. Definitely follow me on social media. All of that information is going to be linked below. I do have a Facebook group where I post all of my crafts and kind of information I post when I've got a new video. Um, so if you'd like to follow that, if you have any questions or concerns, you can ask me here. It would be easier on my social media, but you can ask me down below. Ask me on Facebook in my group. Any questions, any um, recommendations, if you have any just general questions on how to do something. I do a lot of crafts that I haven't shown you yet so far. Um, but shoot me some ideas, and if you would like any answers, I can definitely try to see what I can come up with for you. I will be doing some Pokemon themed coasters for Pokemon Go that everybody has been crazy about. I do not play Pokemon Go, um, but I do go out around with my boyfriend and my mom, so I'm going to make them a couple themed coasters. So w stay tuned for those videos and comment down below if there's a pocket letter you'd like me to do or even a flip book you know, a design, and if your design's picked, definitely would be able to send it to you. Right here, you can see that I've just taken my marker and writing love on it, kind of giving it a little bit of bling without giving it shabam bling, making it a little more than just the purple. And that is all I've got for this flip book. As said before, if I add more to it, I can show you at the end. I don't think I will as it's been a couple days. But if I do, I will let you know. Thanks for watching.